It's November and we all know what that means, don't we? Yes, that's right. It's Mandalorian month. Yes, that's right. We're all excited about the Mandalorian. Well, I am anyway. But uh, before we spend too much time watching the Mandalorian, we need to get focused on our exam, our media exam in particular. So let's have a look at the practice exam we did and let's break down some of the questions. Question one was, in what ways do audiences engage with a media narrative? Six marks. Audiences engage with a media narrative in a variety of ways. Audiences do not engage with a media narrative with a clean slate. They arrive with a series of expectations. These expectations can range from the institutional to the personal. Audiences usually bring with them some prior knowledge of narrative structures, having a beginning, middle and end. The role of characters and structures such as the hero's journey and the three-act structure. They also bring preconceptions based on genre, previous knowledge of the creator or artists, directors or actors work and reviews, trailers and social media. So for example, think about a movie that you wanted to see. You might be familiar with the director. You might be familiar with the genre. Maybe it's a science fiction movie and it, maybe it's done by Christopher Nolan. Well, you'd have a certain expectation about what that would look like and of what the quality should be. If it turns out to be different to your expectation, then you are engaging with that narrative differently. This question asks students to consider the role of the audience in the construction of a media narrative. This answer is not dependent on a textual analysis and students may successfully answer the question without reference to any particular media narrative. Although a strong a stronger answer may contain references to a particular media form. So if you give examples, that would be good. But you don't have to refer to a particular text that you've studied already. And the marking criteria. I'll let you pause that and read that for yourself. Question number two was explain how narrative conventions operate to construct a narrative in your chosen form. Provide examples from the narratives you studied this year. Eight marks. Don't just talk about the narrative of the film and how that engages the audience. You actually have to explain how narrative conventions operate to construct a narrative. So narrative conventions are the elements that structure a narrative and provide a shared language for audiences to construct the narrative within a particular media form. These narrative conventions can involve but are limited to such elements as character construction and motivation, cause and effect, time, space and openings, development and resolution. Or a better way to understand narrative conventions is to look at the acronym COPMES. Cause and effect, opening, development and resolution, point of view, multiple storylines, establishment and development of characters, setting, and structuring of time. And as I said, you can recall these by remembering the acronym COPMES. COP MESS. COP MESS. COP MESS. COP MESS. COP MESS. COP MESS. Cause and effect, opening, development and resolution, point of view, multiple storylines, establishment and development of characters, setting and structuring of time. Stronger responses will explicitly relate this question to the media form that students have studied, so in particular, film. Okay, so the marking criteria, a thorough and detailed explanation of the role narrative conventions play in the construction of a media narrative. A response at this level will explicitly name and describe a number of narrative conventions in their media form and may reference specific instances in the narratives that they've studied. So for example, in the Isle of Dogs film, the character, how were they constructed and how, what was their motivation? For example, the boy, um, Atari, um, he did not speak English, he only spoke Japanese. So he was constructed in a way that was felt a little distant from, say, Western audiences because of the language barrier. And saying that, he was relatable because he liked dogs. He wanted to go and find his dog at all costs. Um, what was his motivation? Well, he wanted to find his dog to get his dog back that was his main motivation and people can relate to that um, and that was what drove the narrative finding his dog um, other characters had motivations as well the um the activist lady young lady from the university her motivation was to stop the tyranny of the fascist dictator 
and so that was her motivation and that drove the narrative forward especially towards the end cause and effect so what things happened in the story that caused other things to happen so what was the effect of isolating all the dogs onto the island for example it meant that they got diseased it meant that they were um, had to learn to live a certain way and so on and so on so if the audience understands some of these conventions of narrative in terms of what to expect when they watch a film when they follow a story when they bring that understanding to the text then it helps them to engage in the story the most similar question to this in last year's exam is this one right here and i would encourage you to have a look at brett lamb's video that delves into this question in detail and i'll include a link to his playlist of exam videos at the end of this video the next question was our question number three even though it says here number four and it was analyze how ideological and or institutional contexts have shaped the narrative in one or both of the narratives that you've studied this year. Eight marks. Ideologies in particular are seen in representations in the narrative. So when we're talking about representations, we're talking about probably the characters. They help and construct and shape a character's behaviors, motivations, action and constructions. The ideologies do that is. Representations of character are not confined to humans, corporations, institutions, animals and natural phenomena may also be constructed as characters and have motivations and behaviours that have been shaped by ideological contexts. We can see this in evil corporations that are motivated by greed, as in Avatar, an alien and also Isle of Dogs and maybe even, dare I say, the Russians in Rocky IV. Similarly, representations can be shaped by institutional contexts, including the star system, e.g. a star not wanting their character to be unlikable, censorship, moral codes, and regulatory bodies. So for example, when we're talking about this part here, think about Sylvester Stallone and his role as Rocky. Now he wrote and directed the Rocky films, and he did not want Rocky as a character to be unlikable. He wanted Rocky to be the star of the show, the hero of the show. So that's something to consider. Censorship, moral codes and regulatory bodies is thinking about the context in which the film was written. Was it written in a time where morals were different to say today? Was there a different standard of censorship? Were the regulatory bodies the people that rate the films and so on, did they have a different approach to things now? So that might affect the rating of the film, it may affect who saw the film because of the rating, that sort of thing. Now here it says, students may choose to compare media narratives, but that is not a requirement of this question. Students may also choose to discuss either ideological or institutional contexts or both. We studied Isle of Dogs and Rocky IV. They're not really that comparable. And that's fine, they don't have to. So you don't have to compare them. So don't feel that you need to. You can discuss one and then discuss the other in this question. Thinking about the uh, ideological context of Rocky IV, for example, we've got the 1980s American capitalism as the predominant ideology of American society. And you've got the opposite side of communism and that sense of the American perception that the Russians had a lack of individuality as shown through Drago and his team of experts and, and um, scientists and all that that were all working together to create a boxing machine. Whereas Rocky was individual. He was able to train himself. He didn't rely on technology and all these other things, but he was able to rely on himself. And that's part of the American way. But also we can look at his lifestyle where he lives in a mansion with expensive cars and that is considered to be the ultimate American dream. To be successful is to be rich and to have it all. And that is promoted in the film as being a desirable thing. And that is a product of the time that the film was made in 1985. We've done all this before, we've studied this quite a bit. The most similar question to this in last year's exam is this one right here. And I would encourage you to have a look at Brett Lamb's video that delves into this question in detail. 
Make sure you do check out Brett Lamb's Lesson Bucket website and have a look at what he's done on narrative and ideology. If you haven't already looked at it a hundred times already, it covers all we've talked about in terms of the cop mess and narrative conventions and everything about uh, narrative codes as well. So do check it out, lessonbucket.com. So this video has gotten quite long already and I'm only part way through the practice exam. So this will be part one. Look out for part two coming soon. And thanks for watching and also check out some of these other videos. Bye for now.